And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it the uh, right here from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. I've got to remember which program I'm hosting today. We're going to talk sports this morning. Girls basketball with Southwestern Lady Rebel coach Devin Brierley, and we'll get to that the next uh, 30 minutes. Of course, we do it from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. I get this rhythm that I go into, and now I'm all messed up. So let's just talk to Coach. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. <laughs> How's life? It's good. Good today. It's good, yes. Good it's today. Very good today. Uh, Record-wise, so far, we are four and six. Four and six, through ten games of the season. We'll we'll get in. We'll kind of break down the season a little bit when we when we get into this. But sure. you know, we were talking before we we went on the air of the whys and what fours do you, do does anybody ever get into coaching and what you know? And I know your story about playing at Southwestern and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Everybody might not know. So you were a standout at Southwestern. You played on some good ball clubs. You played for Donna Cheatham. And then now you're back coaching. So you kind of went full circle. Right. Yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of funny how, you know, life does come full circle. And this is just how it did for me, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, starting out at, at Southwestern and then, being an indie for the time that I was, mm -hmm. and then you went um, to Butler, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, graduated in Southwestern in 2008. Went to Butler and played. Um, stayed up there for six years, and then when I came back, coached JV with Kenny Garrett mm -hmm. at Southwestern. Yeah. Um, and then went to Hanover College, and then back now. Yeah. You know, leading the program. So um, I'm really I'm humbled yeah. by it, and it, it's just a neat thing to to come back and coach at a, at a school that you went to graduated from had success at um you talk about being humbling but you know the programs and all programs have up and ups and downs and they have you know peaks and valleys and not every coach can rescue a team from a valley or, or make it a peak but you just you got to take one day at a time absolutely and i think that's um the mindset that we have and uh, we knew that coming in it was going to be a process mm -hmm. um you know we would love for it to happen overnight um, but that's just not realistic mm -hmm. and um you know taking over the program so late was was kind of un unfortunate but mm -hmm. hey that's the the hand we were dealt with and right. we've we've worked with that um so even from you know october 15th from the first day of practice we've made uh, significant improvements um you know and, and so and it's it's hard when a new coach comes in late mm -hmm. and you have new girls and you have a completely new system um and you know we kind of uh, gave them a heads up that hey we are going to have our highs and lows and mm -hmm. um, as long as we stick together and work as a team and uh, continue to improve and grow every day uh, at the end of the day that's a win for us you you do you kind of convey to them that you don't want the highs to be too high and the lows to be too low yes I mean you know we, we try to we try to stay even keeled mm -hmm. you know um, and especially with uh, a couple of weeks ago you know when we lost a couple in a row mm -hmm. uh, it it's hard to, uh, you know, kind of get them out of a funk. And, and right. but, um, you know, we stress to them, like I said, every day, just continue improving, and you will get that feeling mm -hmm. of, you know, the highs more right. often than the lows. You you look at your progression then through from practice day one to where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes, and, and it's hard for people, some people to understand, it's not about wins and losses, it's right. about quality of play. Right. And and I think that speaks a lot to our program right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think our record right now shows exactly how much work we've put in or how hard these girls are playing. Um, and, and so, and I know a lot of people just look at the record, and, mm -hmm. and that's frustrating. Um, but, you know, we like to win. In, in, uh, but... Like I said, you know, they've improved tremendously from October 15th, and, and that's where we have to, um, you know, take out the record and just kind of look at where we've come from right. and how far we've come in a short amount of time. You, you coached at Hanover College. You were an assistant out there. And then to come back into the high school realm, that different level, has that been a big adjustment? 
has in certain ways, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, but I think in a lot of ways it's similar too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you as a coach, you're, you're just trying to, you know, impact these, these players' lives in a positive way and, and teach them, you know, basketball, but you're also teaching them life lessons too. Right. And so in a lot of ways it's similar. Um, a few ways it's different, right. you know, it, it's just the game is a little more advanced. But um, other than that, you know, I, I didn't, the reason I got into coaching is, is because I love the sport mm -hmm. and I love the girls, you know, on the team. And right. so uh, I really think, you know, building the relationships and creating those memories mm -hmm. is why I got into it and what makes it fun. You, I've seen, I think, if I remember right, I've seen pictures posted on social media of stuff that you guys have done mm -hmm. off the court yes. as a group. Yes. How important is that for team building? Oh, it is extremely important. I mean, that's, that's one of our main priorities is to um, build those relationships off the court because I think that's, that helps our chemistry on the court, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, if things aren't going our way in a game that can help us you know mm -hmm. come together and right. kind of make a run if we need to um, but yeah we we try and have um, team get-togethers and, and bonding and mm -hmm. you know activities every once in a while and we we just that's you know that's part of it and and that's really fun for us who, who comes up with the stuff that you do then it, it is a joint effort <laughs> um, we our slogan this year is teamwork makes the dream work and mm -hmm. and really um, when it comes to team activities uh, the coaches get together and, and kind of say you know what would be good for for today mm -hmm. um, so it's really a, a joint effort and mm -hmm. so uh, but our Halloween get together was really fun. We did the uh, <laughs> excuse me the pumpkin carving contest. Yes, so, I saw that. Yeah, so we've just had, we've had some really good times. Did you know when you left high school you wanted to get back, or did you? you I didn't want to say you could come back to Southwestern, but yeah. coaching was a vision of yours. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, playing. Yeah, I just I just love the sport in mm -hmm. general, and um, you know coaching and teaching has always been a passion of mine and um, I, I knew regardless I wanted to be a coach I wasn't sure at what level mm -hmm. uh, you know and so I've kind of gotten a taste of both levels and, and I like both of them yeah you know so um, there's there's pros at, at each level so yeah I mean I think it's just in my genes too you know right. both of my parents have coached right. so uh, yeah definitely this is something that I want to do as long as I can what's uh, what's something that you you've taken away from the game that you want to pass along to the to the girls well I've taken a lot yeah um, you know but I, I think to pass along to the girls, you know, like I said, it, it's not all about wins and losses. Sure. Um, you know, it, it's about working as a team uh, to achieve, you know, one goal. Um, and, uh, you know, when you go through the lows, you, you've got to understand that you've just got to keep grinding through that, and, and ultimately you'll come out on top. And, you know, a lot of those are life lessons too, right. you know, and, um, I, I see that every day in in my job, you mm -hmm. know, at the school, and so uh, I want these girls to be prepared for life after high school. Mm -hmm. And so, every teaching opportunity that we have that really might not relate to basketball, mm -hmm. you know, we use that. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of things, but uh, for them just to to understand that it's much more than basketball. Yeah. And so if they take that. We've done our jobs. I talk to coaches all the time, and I, I, I always ask. I, I like to try to ask intelligent questions, but sometimes they don't come out that way. But I always ask coaches, um, you know, about wins and losses, and and is there ever such thing as a as a good loss? Is there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, you know I, I think one loss that comes to mind. Um, well, two maybe that, that were good losses for us was our first game of the year mm -hmm. against Crothersville. Right. 
Um, I mean, we had two weeks to prepare for that, mm -hmm. and we come out and uh, we lose by five. Yeah. You know, and um, <laughs> we had two weeks to work on a brand new defense, <laughs> brand new offense, right. and um, and that's just because the girls were playing hard. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, we take that as a good loss, and um, you know. The game against South Dearborn, even though we didn't start off too great, uh, we we had a great fourth quarter. Right. Uh, we scored 25 points, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we just fought until the end. So there is, to me, you yeah. know, in, in my humble opinion, there is such thing as good losses, and we've had a few of those yeah. this year. Uh, you you come come in and take over the program. We only got a couple of weeks to instill new things and new mindsets, and. Um, it's it's easy for kids, and and every coach knows this. It's hard for high school kids, I think, to understand. Sometimes it's easy for kids to learn to understand. It's easy to lose. Right. It's a whole lot harder to win. Right. Yes. And and you know we we work every day at um, you know trying to adjust the mindset mm -hmm. um, and to, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just grow every day um, in not necessarily in the X's and O's part, but right. in the the attitudes, in the mindsets, uh, you know, and so um, it is, I mean, it's, it's a challenge, you know, and, um, but that we know that that's one of the biggest parts of the, of the game is, um, you've got to believe in yourself first, right. you know, and, um, it, it is, it is easy to lose. Um, and, and I think our kids do understand, you know, it, it's harder to win mm -hmm. and, you know, that's why we are maybe, you know, as hard as we are on them, right. you know, because we know that we have the talent. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, you know, every day we're working on building confidence mm -hmm. uh, and, and trying to adjust the mindset to where these kids, you know, believe in themselves, believe in what we're trying to do uh, and just, you know, coming together as one collective group and, yeah. and um you know, having one goal in mind. You, it, it was something I talked to Coach Baumholt about last week too. Was, uh, uh, and you talk about confidence. Is, mm -hmm. is a kid coming in with the confidence to, to be able to miss a shot, and then come right back down and shoot another one? Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes you miss one, and then you're hesitant to shoot again. Right. Even the best miss. Yes, and, and we tell our we tell our girls that every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the times we will tell. Um, our kids, you're the best player on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, and and they've got to believe that because they can be at any given time. Right. Um, and, and you know, it, it's been like I said, it's been a challenge to adjust mindsets, but um, we we try and work on that every day, uh, you know, and point out the positives as much as we can, mm -hmm. um, and instill, you know, in our players that hey, you know. You're going to miss a thousand shots, but you could also hit right. a thousand shots. Right. You know, so um, you just got to keep shooting. Yeah. And uh, bottom line. So. And, and when you, and that's a great point because I've I've heard this for years. Good shooters keep shooting, and, and that's what they're supposed to do. Right. With the confidence that at some point it's going in. Yes. Yes. And, and you it, can't miss it unless you shoot it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, unless you shoot the ball, you don't know if you're going to hit it or miss it. That's right. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I, I think our girls have uh, come a long way mm -hmm. in in um, already in, yeah. in changing the mindset and um, you know like I said our coaching staff has worked really hard to um, every day build confidence in our kids mm -hmm. uh, and and point out the positives uh, and so hopefully you know that yeah. over the course of time you know that that will kind of take care of itself what uh, coming into the, to the program late and getting started late and kind of being behind the eight ball so to speak and you're, you're trying to change the mindset and you're trying to instill new things kind of on the fly as the season goes mm -hmm. but kind of projecting ahead to once the season the season is over with then we have some things that we need to do you I'm sure probably have thought that far ahead. oh yeah <laughs> yeah um, you know it, it's it's been a challenge but you know we don't use that as a 
use that sure. as an excuse. Um, but, you know, it, and our girls have been great about, um, you know, being able to to be engaged in practice and, and mm -hmm. learn new things as quickly as, you know, as, as they have. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, we, we've got a lot of things in mind, mm -hmm. um, especially for, you know, postseason and, and the summer will definitely help. Right. Um, but, you know, we, we've got this season right now and uh, every day we've got to use it to, you know, work on stuff that we've already put in or find uh, an hour or so to put in something <laughs> new if we can. Um, but, but like I said, you know, uh, our girls have been great about uh, embracing, you know, new things right. and, and uh, embracing the transition. And, um, you know, it's going to take time. And uh, for me, you know, it, I've just got to be realistic, you know, with myself. And, you know, it, as you mentioned earlier, it doesn't happen overnight. Right. And I knew that. But sometimes, you know, I get this, like, yeah. oh. But, um but it, it, you know, it's been fun. It's been challenging, but it's a fun process. Well, and that and that kind of brings me to the point. It, it, if the kids got to be having fun, but the coaches have to be having fun too. Right, and, and I tell you, Tim, I honestly believe I have the best coaching staff around i mean we have um you know we're we're on the same page mm -hmm. you know we we want to win um and we you know we can be serious but we can also be silly yeah you know and um and the girls see that i think sure and um but yeah i mean I have a great coaching staff. I can't say enough about them. You um, want to mention them? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, our JV coach is Sarah Hoskins. Um, <clears throat> and then two assistant coaches are my dad, Kevin Brierley, and then Zach Nussbaum. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, we, Nussbaum and, and my dad and I have, have all coached together before. Right. You know, under Kenny. And I've known Sarah for a while. So um, our, our personalities click. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we, um, we, we try and have as much fun as we can in the midst of things, you know. And um, so it, it's been really fun yeah. uh, for the coaching staff. I, I actually overheard a player say one time, and, and I, I, honest to goodness, they said, you know what, you can't, you can't be serious and have fun at the same time. Yes, you can. Right. Yes, you can. It's possible. It is possible. It's possible. you got to figure it out, but it's possible. Right, right. And if you can figure it out, You'll have some success. Absolutely. <laughs> Coach, four and six as you got to win last night over Shaw in a mm -hmm. conference matchup at the Hillary Mini Gymnasium. But four and six through ten could always be better, could always be worse. Progression, we've talked about that. But mm -hmm. through, through ten games, do you, have, do you break the season down as a game or as a set of games or – how do you how do you look at it? Um, I mean, you, you know, after every game, you know, we we kind of break it down and mm -hmm. we talk about things. And um, but you know, some of those games where you know we we knew that we weren't our best, sure. you know, we kind of try and just kind of skip over those, sure. you know, when uh, and so. Right now, you know, with, with just the 10 games, and we've kind of looked at it uh, as a collective uh, unit, you know, um, and so. The four and six, like you said, could be worse. Mm -hmm. Definitely could be better. Sure. Um, you know, I think there was a couple of those games that, that we could have gotten, but um, but I think you know, as we look back on it, you know, as I've mentioned many times before, um, the improvement that we've made and um, the the little. Uh, the stuff that we've been able to do in the little amount of time that we've had um, is a win for us. Right. You look at um, the numbers that you have, uh, varsity numbers, JV numbers, but t t total numbers for the program to your liking? Not yet. Not yet. Um, I don't. I don't think I'd ever be satisfied. <laughs> um, and, and that's that's a huge goal of mine. Right. Um, is is to kind of bring the numbers back. Uh, and, but you know what? I'm thrilled with the numbers that we have at sure. the high school level. Right. Uh, you know, we, we're able to have a JV team this year, and that helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. You know, for those kids to get that experience. Um, but yeah, uh, the the numbers. You know, through junior high and elementary, I would like to see them um, 
uh, be a larger, mm -hmm. you know, number. And, and like I said, you know, that's something that that is a huge goal of mine, and yeah. that we're going to work really hard at is, you know, trying to um, get these programs in place and, and be consistent and um, make basketball, you know, right. fun and exciting, right. and um, but also try and and teach these kids, you know, right. things early on so they'll be ready to go when they get to the high school level well and it's like every coach goes through it's we we want our our uh, our lower level programs to be in place we want those fundamentals to be taught not that you guys don't work on fundamentals uh -huh. at your level but we want them to be taught that way when they get to us everybody's ready on the same page yes easier said than done how do you get kids interested to play basketball I think that's the question of the century, Tim. Um, <laughs> if I knew that, I could solve yeah, the problem. Yeah, uh, I wish I had my magic <laughs> wand, you know. Um, it's hard. Uh, you know, I, being, you know, when I was in Indy, you know, it seemed it seemed kind of the same way, right. you know. is It's just, I, I don't know if this just a lot of other things going on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and at Southwestern, you know, I know we're a smaller school sure. and, um, you know, we have multi-sport athletes, which I believe in a hundred percent, you know, I was one myself, right. uh, and, and I support that, uh, fully, um, you know, so, so I'm not sure. Um, I think maybe it's just, you know, networking and getting the word out and, um, you know, but I think it, it also helps too when you have, um, you know, good people in your, uh, you know, junior high and elementary programs, and we do. Right. Uh, you know, right now we at our junior high program, you know, we have Paula Fulton and and Ryan Munt, and mm -hmm. they've coached for a long time. Sure. And and so, um, but in order to get kids out, you know, to play, I I don't know. I don't have the <laughs> answer. I wish I did. <laughs> It's it's a it's a tough situation, and it's not just here. It's as you mentioned, it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere that maybe too many other things to do and too many side attractions to be involved with, and maybe I just don't feel like I want to do it. Right. And it's a shame because there's a lot of great athletes out there that aren't participating in something. And mm. you mentioned multi-sport athletes. How does how does being a multi-sport athlete help an athlete play basketball? Oh gosh, I think it helps in a lot of ways, you know, um, with, with obviously the physical stuff, sure. your hand eye coordination, right. and conditioning, and um, but uh, you know, I, I think through the other sports, you know, there are also there are different lessons mm -hmm. um, that that they're learning or different coaching styles that they um, you know are adjusting to, right. and so um, I think it kind of gives them, um, you know. A, a broader uh, or you know a differential and, and mm -hmm. trying to you know learn to adjust to new things or right. new ideas and um, or if they've been through similar situations in a fall sport sure in you know yeah. come to winter and it happens maybe you know they learn how to they already know how to deal with it you know right. so um, I think being a multi-sport athlete like I said I, I'm in full support mm -hmm. of that and you know especially at small schools um, but it, you know it, it helps in, in a variety of ways you're four and six now you got a conference win last night. Uh -huh. What's your conference record? What is it? What was it last night? Your first? Yes. So you're one and zero in the conference. Yes, we'll take it. We, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> one and zero in the conference. Um, when you play in the conference, has I mean, let's look at Jacksonville for an example. A great team. Scott Smith mm -hmm. does a great job up there. You approach that team with with a team that you're trying to build upon. And, and you know it's going to be a tough battle. How do you how do you convey that kind of information to your kids of you know don't be beat before you walk in the door? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think you know we um, we're, we're really honest with them and upfront. Sure. You know, and just saying you know for example Jacksonville, uh, how good of a team they are. However, mm -hmm. um, you know we we also are are doing our best to to pump them up, mm -hmm. get them excited for the game. You know. It's a great opportunity, you right. know. If, if you can knock off Jacksonville, you know, I mean, right. uh, you've just you've just done an incredible thing. Yeah. Um, so, kind of looking at it in that way, you know, uh, just think about going in there and, and knocking them off. Right. You know, already trying to uh, change the mindset or um, instill that confidence before they even walk in the door. Right. Don't back down. Exactly. 
You you look at um, the rest of the season then, of course, you're 10 games into the season. You're almost to the halfway point of the season already. Um, what do you what do you want to see this team accomplish going down the going down the stretch? Um, you know, it, it's hard to put into words. You know, obviously we want to have a winning record, sure. and um, but uh, you know, I I want to see us. Uh, you know, in the games, for example, like South Ripley. Right. You know, I um, you know I, I want us to to come in and, and be prepared and. and look and feel like we have that confidence right from the start right you know um I, as as we progress through the season you know we've talked about um you know right now we know we we've got to start the game like we play in the fourth quarter right you know so i would really <laughs> like to see that um but uh you know and, and for the team to continue to play as one mm -hmm. i think they've done a great job of sure. that um is you know uh, our team is so unselfish sometimes i'm like you've got to be selfish right. you know yes. in a good way in a good way um and so uh just continuing to play as as one and um you know getting along and, and seeing that chemistry on and off the floor and and the main thing you know and people forget about this a lot is just having fun having fun yep how many seniors four Do you want to mention them yes mm -hmm. um we have emma foley taylor cole uh, Kate Sampson and KK West mm -hmm. and um, our seniors have been great you know um, they they provide great leadership um, you know they <coughs> they kind of uh, are able to get us on the same page when you know sometimes we we kind of find ourselves on an island or mm -hmm. we're, you know we're not together right. um, but but yeah I mean I, I couldn't be you know, more than more than happy with the seniors that we have. Right. Um, I, I'm going to enjoy every minute that we get with them the rest of the year. They are, and and you've been in their spot. I mean, mm -hmm. you as a senior, you you have the privilege of being a leader. You have the privilege of 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 being a a spokesman for your team per se. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's those unwritten rules of things about a senior that you have that that you're granted because you're a senior. But as for a coach, the seniors are always so special. They are. They are. And, and these kids are good kids, mm -hmm. you know. And, and our team is filled with good kids. And um, you know, it good kids are hard to find these days. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know. All of my kids mean a lot to me, and and with the seniors, you know, it's kind of special for me too because when I was JV coach at Southwestern, I was coaching those kids, right? You know, and I, I got away from it for a couple of years, and now we meet again. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's special for me in that my first year, I get to spend it right with them, right? So yeah, it's a it's a special time with seniors indeed, Coach. What before we wrap it up? What uh, what uh, I mean, you're going to be playing in a sectional, and again, once you get to sectional play, nobody cares what your regular season record was. Right. And, and you know, that's another thing we stress to our girls is the end of January is our goal. Right. You know, um, so do what you want with the wins and losses. Um, and But, yes, every day, you know, that that's what we're working towards, uh, and, and that is the ultimate prize. And so uh, trying to keep that in mind, you know, after a win, after a loss. Sure. Uh, and so uh, yeah, we, um, we're excited to see, you know, what we do in the sectional. We, you know, we know that uh, we've got some tough competitors mm -hmm. in there, but – I think that you know, with with how hard our kids play and with the time that we have before sectionals, I think that we can be a contender. I really do. There's nothing wrong with going in and spoiling somebody's sectional. Oh yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> feeling. <laughs> That's yeah. right. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's right. Coach, we appreciate you coming in this morning. We we muttered through 30 minutes with no problem. Yeah. Uh, well, and I knew I we like would. to talk. Oh, I can't <laughs> hardly believe that. Uh, next step for you guys is when. Thursday at New Washington. At New Washington. Mm -hmm. So, again, enjoy the Lady Rebels. Coach, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. All right. Again, that's Devin Marley, Southwestern Lady Rebel basketball coach at Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop.
Travis and I will be on the road tonight. We'll be at Borden covering Southwestern Boys. They'll take on Borden tonight, our pregame at 7.15. We'll do it all again next Saturday, live from McDonald's Coach's Corner. We'll be talking Madison swimming next Saturday morning. Thanks to Devin Brierley for coming in. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. I'm Tim Torrance. Until next time on Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.